Hey everyone, before we start the show, I just want to get some plugs out of the way. If you enjoy this podcast and you're into wrestling, check out the Nerds and Marks podcast or Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. If you're not getting your fill on movie and entertainment discussion, then check out the Entertainment Buffet podcast. If you want to dive into the world of video games, I highly recommend the Dark Cast by my friends over at DarkStation.com. Listen to them cover important topics and interview men and women from all over the industry. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelf Podcast episode 15. So this is the episode that is actually going to be Halloween 3D, which we were supposed to do last week, but my guest was sick. But we got to sit down this week and talk about what would have been the third Rob Zombie Halloween movie. Uh, I think it was a really interesting conversation. Um, I really enjoyed talking about this one. It's a very different Halloween movie. We've definitely seen like bits of this in previous Halloween movies, but never one that tried to tackle it the way this one did. And whether you see it as a success or fail, it's still a really interesting read for a Halloween fan. I was never a huge fan of slasher movies, but the Halloween, the original two Halloween movies and the first Rob Zombie remake are ones that stick with me. I actually really enjoy those as much as I'm not a fan of slasher movies. Those are some of the originals and that one remake (laughs) um, that it's hard to deny their staying power and just how how fucking good they are. I I mean, I watch them. They're always on TV during the Halloween season, um, so I always end up seeing them every year. But I really enjoy them, and I really enjoyed this episode and talking about Halloween 3D with Vinny, my returning guest, who's kind of my go-to for the horror movies. You should know that by now. And uh, don't forget to check out his horror-themed clothing line, uh, The Cryptic Closet, and you can find them at uh, thecrypticcloset.com and on Instagram at The Cryptic Closet. Uh, Some really great stuff. They have a lot of really great pins, too, as well for those pin collectors. But yeah, so I'm just going we're just going to jump right into the episode. So today is Halloween 3D with my guest Vinny. I'm just trying to get my notes in order. I had to like look over them because it's uh-huh. been so long since I read it. I'm already reading like two other scripts for my next shows. Um, it was pretty. Uh, just like some parts I liked about it, and some parts I was just. Uh, I was I was pretty interested from the beginning, but I mean, it was it was it was fun to read. You know, it was like it was definitely yeah. something that I mean. I, I get sucked in by pretty much anything that's Halloween. You know, yeah. Michael Myers. Um, but there were some parts that I did like that kind of gave like an homage to like the originals. Yeah, which I, I feel like you kind of have to. Um, so I, I saw the first Rob Zombie Halloween movie. I never saw the second one. Okay. Everyone like they came out in what two thousand nine, I think. Around there, because I think the first one was two thousand seven. Seven, yeah. And then so this script is dated two thousand nine, so it came out the same year that Halloween came out. I assume it came out around October. I. That seems kind of like the a no-brainer. The first one did. It came out on Hall- or Halloween weekend. Or yeah. The Friday before. But I don't know. I don't remember the second one. The second one was kind of more of like a flop. Yeah. If you remember reading the part about the white horse and the mom, yeah. that kind of ties into the second I one. I definitely saw trailers for the second one. And I heard I didn't see it because everybody said it was bad. Like, I didn't hear anybody really saying anything good about I mean, it. It was the horror and, like, the, the kills were really just gruesome and just fucking really gritty and they were cool yeah. which but, but it just i think the plot and like the parts of there were some parts that just didn't make any sense like the ghost of the mom which was one yeah thing. but then there was i like heard a lot of complaints horse. about that yeah, yeah and the she was walking around with the horse and it just it just felt like a concept that was just kind of forced in there that just didn't yeah. make any sense it just, didn't fit the tone or anything right um i the most i know about the movie is i saw i don't know if you know who the angry video game nerd is uh, he's this guy who does these 
video reviews of like old shitty Nintendo games and stuff online and the whole characters he's like yelling and screaming all the time. Oh, okay. But he's like a huge movie guy and he does like I think I showed you on around Halloween he does this uh, Monster Madness series where every day in October he reviews another horror movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One year he did he like themes the years and one year I think he did Sequelathon or whatever where he would just cover franchises and he covered Halloween so he did all of the Halloween movies. And this is kind of the only time I've seen anything from the second Rob Zombie Halloween movies. He specifically called out one moment where I think he's stabbing like a nurse or something. You're fine. And uh, it's just like him pounding the knife into the ground yeah, just it's over like, and it's over. Really and it's like brutal. he stops and looks at her. They just gives it one more type situation. And I guess he says like a lot of the kills in that movie are pretty similar, just a little over the top. Right, like the kills. I mean, that 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 all was fucking worth watching alone. But I mean, if you're looking at it for a good sequel, no. I've always wanted to go back and watch it just because I do like the first one. I legit like people. Oh, I I feel like the general opinion of the first Halloween is people kind of shit on it because like, oh, why would you remake it? And then you remade it, and it's kind of just the same movie again. I'm like, fuck it. It was very entertaining. It wasn't. It wasn't the same movie. It's it's one thing. Pretty similar, but it's different enough. Yeah, in a sense, like the John Carpenter, like when John Carpenter did it, and he, you know, obviously he did the original and all that shit. Like the way he approached the whole movie was. Less is more. Yeah. You know, like you don't see as much in your face blood. Rob Zombie approached it in a like, I want to make Michael Myers fucking scary again. Yeah. I mean, and he did like he's a beast in those Rob Zombie movies. And And that's what makes me like him. You get a little more of a backstory as to what him as a kid. So the way I look at it is the original movie was Laurie's story. The Rob Zombie movie was Michael's story because it definitely follows Michael as a character more than anybody else in that story. Mm-hmm. And what I'll say about this script is it's kind of Laurie's story again, but from a different perspective. Where yeah. the first Rob Zombie movie was Michael's story, this Rob Zombie movie would have been Laurie's story. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the second one. I don't know. The second one was like, I mean, it was it was fucking weird, dude. I can't I, even I, really say. I know he, it straddles the lines of like playing with her sanity yeah. and that's something that this script kind yeah, of continues kinda, he, they, they pretty much for this one it was like laurie was it was like the other michael myers yeah let's much. turn her the into Robin michael myers to his batman you know yeah I mean? which was it kind of an interesting idea because if you think about halloween it's always just been michael myers and the one time they kind of deviated from it with halloween 3 although nowadays people say it is a great movie i've never seen it that it is like a good standalone horror movie that it's like, oh, once you lose Michael Myers, you kind of lose the appeal of it. And they've kind of toyed around. I think, was it Halloween 4 where the little girl is yeah, kind of like, pos- yeah. They've definitely toyed around with the idea of doing things like tied to the family. But this is kind of the most extreme case of that. I mean, they were starting to do that in part four where it seemed like the niece was going to take over for Michael Myers. Yeah. And then part five came and, and then it was- changed the whole ending completely yeah. and made it seem like she was running from him again yeah like the thing is i I'm i don't know if i've ever seen of, five yeah i have i have so it's six it, the like thorn curse thing with well, yeah with paul rudd yeah. yeah so i don't think i've ever seen five that one was not that great um as they kept going they kept i don't know um, yeah although I, I do like h2o i like so i was reading this and i, I i'm a fan of the whole making Lori kind of crazy because i think yeah. anybody in that situation would naturally just go fucking insane i'll say it's it's a new direction for the series that we haven't really seen before I, but at the again it becomes a problem where michael myers is kind of a background character yeah um, but the thing is i mean if you if you really look back on just halloween fans the theory of, yeah. of Lori being crazy has been going on since. Is that since a thing? The original. That's, yeah. Okay, so people, that's something people have been pretty much been waiting for Jamie Lee Curtis to be to kind of to s- flip turn, you know. So I have my history with Halloween. I don't know yours. Is it's one of the first horror movies I ever remember seeing. It probably isn't. Like I think Child's Play I saw pretty young, but it was definitely the first movie that scared the shit out of me as a kid. No, that sure. music. Just, the, sim- the simplicity of it. John yeah. Carpenter like nailed that in the sense that. When when I say less is more, yeah, the just exactly like I said, the simplicity is just like it goes but along with the, the thing mask. is I think I've seen Halloween two more as a kid because I definitely remember the hospital and the ending of Halloween two way more than I remember seeing the first one. Those two are the my fucking favorite. I like part yeah. three. It doesn't stand. Side note, um, when I was saying that they kind of you know 
not a, they're, you know, I feel like they paid respects to the old ones in the sense that they did something that Rob Zombie didn't do in the other ones. Like they mentioned Silver Shamrock, which is from the third one, you know what yeah. I mean? Like the masks and all that shit. Yeah. They kind yeah, of tied it all was. in together. And even the part where um, Desmond is, there's a gentleman named Desmond. He's, you, you, you'll learn about it later on in the podcast, but he's about to get killed. And there's a part where he sees somebody dressed up with just a white sheet and a yeah, pair of glasses, which happened, over, in, which happened in the original, which I think Rob Zombie did in the remake as well. Yeah. Um, the only thing I felt is like when I was reading this, I did feel like when this was coming out, I did read that a lot of the original actors who were in it and actresses were yeah. coming back. Oh, really? So the girl who this, played Lori and everything? Right. Scout Taylor Compton. When I was reading this, I just kept picturing her face because she is such a that's regardless if you like the first or second one. Yeah, she was fucking great. She she had that. that All that the look. cast in the Rob Zombie movies were really good. Yeah, but she did a fantastic job of going from the innocent, happy girl to then yeah. slowly kind of transforming into like this, this edgy, just like rebellious yeah. teenager you know and like because part two if, if you watch it i really do want to watch do you own the second one yeah you sh- she, i, um, I want to borrow that yeah she she flips the script completely and you kind of get an yeah. appreciation of her character because you see how much it's all affecting her for the worst you know yeah and this is like it all connects like when i heard when i seen when I, sorry when i read this one <laughs> i just kept picturing i'm like if she wasn't like let's say they were to if, if it make was this, a different and actress, she wouldn't have been the one to play yeah. Laurie. It just wouldn't have made any sense because she kind of was made for this role in this yeah. third one. You know, is she doing anything now? Like, have you, has she done anything um, beyond the Halloween movies? She does a couple indie horror movies. Um, you know, I, I mean, I follow her on on social media, but she hasn't done anything like big as far as horror movies go. Yeah. Um, but I know she does like horror conventions and a lot of that. Oh, shit. okay. Same um, with Daniel Harris, who was. Actually, she was in the original. She played the friend, but she was also the niece in four and five. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, you know way more about this stuff than I do. Because, like, f- yeah, for me, Halloween was one of those ones I stayed away from for a long time because it scared the fuck out of me. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I became an adult that I learned to appreciate the movies. And I can probably count on one hand how many times I've seen um, the Rob Zombie one, the mm-hmm. first one. Um, but, yeah, the the original two I've seen multiple times yeah. at this point. Um but we've, we've talked so much about it, but we haven't even talked about the details of the script. And I love that the beginning is kind of like the opening to a Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah, it's just so much shit it's going on. It's so it. action-packed for the first, like, 20 or 30 pages. I had to reread it at least fucking twice to make sure I got everything. Because I yeah. felt like there were parts that I just... You know, it's it's easy to read it, and but then it's like what the person who was writing it was envisioning in their yeah. head it was probably so fucking chaotic. So but. Rob Zombie wrote the first two, right? Right. So this is the first one that would have not been written by him, which right. I didn't recognize the author. He's definitely reading it. Um, I mean, this is probably pretty common with a lot of horror scripts, but just in the writing, the things he would write, and I've heard people make fun of scripts like this, where like, oh, this girl that was so hot, and she fucking is, just like, like writing like a total bro about yeah. some stuff. Yeah, and some, some things, some of the wording in there, yeah. just side note, so I was like, I... I don't know if this is like for humor I've, sake. Or I've always food. heard talk that in the script for the Entourage movie, there's a line where um, like one of the characters in the movie tells a girl she has a perfect ass. And in the script, it says it is like and that's just kind of what I picked up reading this thing is like this guy is such a fucking sleaze bag. And maybe it's just because he's writing a horror movie because that is the general tone of a slasher movie. That's the slasher tropes of like oh, people who have sex yeah, or get naked. He, he's you like, know. Call, like calls the girl yeah. the end, like sexy is like, yeah, he'd sound like a total dude who just wanted to fucking write yeah total but it's hard to tell if like oh that's just how he is or if that's he was writing it specifically because it's a slasher movie before we go into it did you say this was written in 2009 yeah that's what the date on the script because if was this really going to be a part three or was this originally from everything i've read is that this was going to be like the next in line for rob zombies movies like because it literally picks up at the end of Halloween 2, them yeah, in the just, shed. It's just weird that it came out like it was written literally right when the second well, one came you, out. You got so. to imagine the second one came out in 2009, so it was probably at least written in 2007 but, or 2008. But I'm just thinking, because Rob Zombie, I think I'm pretty sure it was 2008 because he wasn't going to do any more Halloweens. Was he, he got, not going to do he it? He was done. That was the only one he was going to do. And then the first one? money yeah. to where they offered him a, you know good money to do the second one he did it but it felt like he didn't do it because he genuinely wanted to he just wanted the money which is why it kind of fell short this one almost felt like 
the, I, I almost it definitely feel like feels were, like a studio was making the decision and was like here write they just the script to complete the final thought you know what I mean? yeah like like they knew where they wanted the story to end but rob's not me didn't want yeah. to keep going but it, i mean it ends on a major cliffhanger yeah and like i mean we'll get there but the ending i have some issues with yeah it's like every fucking halloween movie yeah um but yeah, the beginning of the movie literally is like just action scene, action scene, action scene. Because it's it's her in the shed, and she, she's basically completely lost it. Like she thinks she's stabbing Michael in the face. But it's Doctor Loomis. Yeah, it's Doctor Loomis, and um, basically they're like, "Oh, we need to get her to a hospital." And as they're taking her to a hospital, like Michael saves her, and she just joins up with him. As in, like, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do because he's just there. Like, I I never really understood why she felt like she had to do it. Just because her family's so fucked up that she assumes that's her fate. Um, towards the uh, the end of uh, part two, it was almost like just like a dark. Uh, yeah, so was that it was, it was, stuff kind of like touched she was, on? It was being, she was slowly being overcome by the darkness. It felt really? like you know, like she was becoming more and more just dark. You know, whether it be her character, the way she dressed, like she was yeah. going down that road. So it, it made sense when you read this and you watch. I mean, even if you don't watch the full movie watch like the last 30 minutes and you'll see yeah. her character kind of transform into the person that we see in the beginning of the script. Okay. Maybe I, man, I really should have watched this movie then. But, um, but what's cool is, I mean, I like the fact that they didn't make her go full, full like villain. You know yeah. I mean? Like she's not right parts away where she, she fucking seemed like a normal person. Yeah. You know? And throughout the script, it's definitely her struggling with it. Like there are definitely times where she's just like, I'm just going to kill somebody or whatever. But then there are times where she shows regret. She doesn't want to be doing this. Like she doesn't want Michael to be around. But then when he is, it's just like, she can't help herself. Yeah. So, I mean, it is kind of an interesting idea, but I just feel like it's, it's a little too back and forth for me that I can never really tell what she actually wants to do. Yeah. Um, and so we do get introduced to our kind of new main character right in the beginning, which is Amy. And it's like her and a bunch of friends hanging out in a graveyard. And then Michael just shows up and murders all of them. And it's, I will say a lot of the deaths in this are pretty gruesome, which I guess mm-hmm. keeping in tone with Halloween too. Cause like thinking back to the first Rob Zombie movie, it's not, there's nothing like over the top that I remember, but it's definitely like he is stabbing people and sticking them to walls and stuff like that. And he is just overpowering people. But you know what? What scene really sticks out to me in the the remake of the first Halloween is um, as a little kid when he beats the shit out of that guy with a stick and yeah. leaves him dead in the woods. Like something, yeah. like, and it's something like that simple. And all he had was a fucking clown mask. Yeah, and something that subtle. It was like you got creeped out by him as a child. It's yes. like you kind of grow to actually see why people are so fucking And that's something that's kind of lost in the script. Like Lori's not scary, Michael's not scary. It's it, it feels there, like an action movie. There's one part that did seem cool that I like they were they were explaining at one point they unmask him and they said part yes. of the mask looked like it was melted onto his face. Yeah. You couldn't tell where the mask started or where the I spots actually were. really like that idea. So one thing I liked about the Rob Zombie movies is he, there was never really su- nothing supernatural about him. He right. was just really big, really strong. So it's believable that he could take a gunshot or something like that. And he never gets hit somewhere. I mean, I guess, isn't there multiple endings to the first one? Isn't there one where she shoots him and then one where he's just like disappears, kind of like in the original movie? Yeah, and the one where she shoots him and like he fucking the blood all over. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know which one is considered the true ending to that movie. There was, I mean, there's a few different parts because I feel like there's even a, a different um, intro to the movie. Really for the yeah, first yeah, one? Yeah, because I, I I had it, I had it on um, a screen copy of the movie. Yeah, that came out. I want to say a week or so before the movie released, because I was like, super yeah, I do remember that one. Like, watching it, yeah. I watched it, and it was like perfect quality. It was a killer, awesome. Yeah. But there was still a big part of me as a fanboy that wanted to go see it in theaters. So oh, I wanted absolutely. To go see it in theaters, and it was different. Really, like the, the the beginning, just like the intro. A little different. Um, the ending was still the same, but the, yeah, there is an alternate ending in the the first one. You know, it's been a long time since I've watched yeah, it. Yeah, so I guess I mean him taking a gunshot to the face theoretically he could survive that, but I guess that's kind of the only moment where it's like he clearly died and should not have come back. Right. But yeah, and like I don't. In the second one, does he? Do they show him die? He gets shot a bunch, right? Yeah, dude, I have to rewatch. Yeah, I honestly, have, I, like I said, I've never seen it. The, I don't. The Rob Zombie Halloweens isn't like the... I can tell you about the fucking originals, but the Rob yeah. Zombie ones... I mean, the, the first one I have it's more fresh in my head, but the second one was like not something that... Yeah, probably one just people have, have seen it. the least, yeah. Um, but yeah, I do, so in the beginning, they're escaping in an ambulance, and then it's Michael gets in there, and it's all crazy, and the ambulance blows up. 
And so this was written as a 3D movie because 2009 was when Avatar came out. So 3D was the big thing. And in the script, there are a lot of moments where like, oh, a head's thrown in our face or whatever, you know, which is kind of interesting. I never read a movie that was specifically supposed to be like a 3D gimmick movie. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting to see that stuff written on the page. Mm -hmm. Just like I've I've never read a musical and I have the script for La La Land. I want to look at it just to know, like, are the songs in the script, you know, or is it just like insert song here? (laughs) Um, So it is interesting to hear that stuff. Um but yeah, so we get we get this huge like out of control action scene in the beginning, and this is where we int- get introduced to Amy, our main character, and then we get a what is it a one year or a two year time jump? It's a year. It's three. It's not even a year. It's three hundred sixty yeah. days. So it's like a couple days for Halloween, and Amy and Lori are both in the same mental institution, mm-hmm. which would never happen. But like, um, keep in mind also, um, Amy almost died. Yeah. The, um, what happened? They were in the cemetery and you seen Lori, and they were teasing her as to why the fuck are you here? You know. Yeah. Come to realize that. And then Lori Michael kind of like Myers, looms behind them, type situation. Yeah, they were like. Or bearing, no, they're digging up. They're the digging mom. up the mom's body, and then um, they see them there, and then. Which see he, that was an idea I liked the idea of him, like bringing his family together with the mom's corpse was a much cooler idea than him seeing visions of her in the second one. I, mean, I actually if, did if like you, that. If idea. you look at the Rob Zombie, the first one, I mean, those three seem to be the closest. I mean, even when he killed his dad, yeah, he was outside with the baby, yeah, waiting for his mom to come home. You know what I mean? So it was always yeah. him, Lori, and the baby, and the mom, was Lori, or him, yeah. Angel, and the mom. You oh, yeah, know, Angel. So was was that the case in the original John name. Carpenter movies? Was it Angel as well, or was that a Rob Zombie thing? Um, you know, I don't fucking remember. I don't. I feel like I don't feel like that ever came up in the older ones. Uh, I fuck a lot of weed and I watch movies, <laughs> horror movies. So, um, yeah. I mean, I I'll, I assume that's just kind of a Rob Zombie thing, but yeah. But so they're so they see them in the cemetery and they don't know what the fuck's going on. Keep in mind, yeah, he's like them, in but the they, grave, but they like, only see Lori. Yeah. All of a sudden they get closer and it's like Amy, her boyfriend, her friends, they get closer, realize that they're digging up the body and that it's Michael Myers. Yeah. The, the boyfriend ends up getting killed. His head, he gets gets his, his head off. cut off with a shovel. And they put him in the fucking coffin. S- somehow and, she and ends the, up in the coffin and he ends up like on top of her. No, she, she falls. He was, he was in there first. Yeah. With, without the head. And then she he gets thrown her. in and then the lid gets, thrown down on her and they i guess they kind of bury her or no he throws like gravestones on top yeah, of it and I think. almost tries to get her buried alive yeah the, the so she's come. stuck in this coffin with her boyfriend's dead body just like oozing blood all over her like there's there's some legitimately good gruesome moments in the script mm-hmm. like multiple times throughout the script um i did really like that moment and i as, as crazy and over the top as the beginning is i do really enjoy it there's a couple weird moments where her and Michael are traveling together and then the cops catch up to them and Michael suddenly disappears and then he reappears. And yeah, it's, I, it was it was kind of hard to follow. Like, you mean like when they were like that sewer? Yeah, they're in the like clock? a sewer and then she's by. So I guess the cop, I guess, is that her like adoptive father? Uh, Goodman, if or it's, I want to say um, no, it's, it's um, the, the it's I have the, his name somewhere here. No, he's the dad of Bracket. her best friend. Bracket. I, I want to say that's the best friend's dad. Oh, OK. Because he seemed kind of like a father figure to her in the script. Yeah, he's but. the one who Danielle Harris's character. Yeah, her father. I want to say. Okay. Was that so? It was yeah. Like so a, he was yeah. like close to her, but right. It, yeah. And then yeah, ba- all, Michael just basically kills all the cops except for Brackett's the one who kind of keeps slipping away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, this eventually leads to the ambulance and where everybody starts getting fucked up there. Like I'm t- trying to think, the ambulance like it basically tips over or hits somebody. They hit. They hit um Lori. Yeah, Lori gets hit. I thought she died because yeah. like she basically comes running out of the woods as the ho- as the ambulance is taking Amy. I think. Yeah, because she 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 just booked it. Once Michael Myers was yeah. killing all them in the sewer, she fucking booked it. Yeah, and she just gets run down by this ambulance. So the ambulance stops, and that's when Michael shows up and starts like killing the driver, and Amy's in the back, and then Bracket comes up, and I think he shoots Michael. Yeah, and, and then nothing happens. Yeah, and then um. Uh, Lori ends up killing Brackett and it's implied later that she was kind of like hallucinating and thought mm-hmm. he was Michael. She didn't think it was him. Yeah. 
because she's just kind of losing her mind. And then, then we get our time jump to a year. And yeah, Goodman is the cop that helps save Amy. And then it's implied that they've become close over this year. And then we learn more. He's about, almost like the new Dr. Loomis. Yeah. And he's, he was a really good character. I, yeah. I liked him. They imply that he's a little crazy mm-hmm. because he keeps the cremated remains of yeah. Michael's mom on his desk. Which but in is, the end, you kind of get a good idea as to why. You know, yeah. It's almost like The Undertaker. It's like you're, you have slight control. Yeah. You have that one thing over him that you know yeah. at any moment you can make him vulnerable to you. Yeah, because at this point, everybody assumes Michael's dead because the ambulance gets blown up and Michael's inside it and we get our little 3D gimmick of seeing him inside as the fire engulfs it. And then it's kind of like, you know, cut to black, probably cut to a title at that point. Yeah, and that's when it was like the 362 days later. Yeah. Everybody thought he was done and he was dead. And now Lori, everybody's pretty much in like a mental institution. Yeah, Lori and Amy are in the same mental, mental institution. institution. Jesus Christ. Yeah, which mental. is... I thought a mental institution was a good setting for a Halloween movie. I can't recall a mental institution playing a major role in any other Halloween movie. Um, there was a couple. Um, I'm trying to think of the exact. Uh, I want to say. But was it like a prime location or one they look? Because most of the movie takes place in this mental institution. Um, like it reminded me of how Halloween H2O mostly took place in the school. It's. I want to say. Oh, fuck. No, it's not. Because um, four, I think, is they're transporting him out of a mental institution, right? It's the one where there's one where it opens up in a mental institution. That's where Jamie Lee Curtis dies. That's where she's, resurrection, isn't it? I with the uh, Buster Rhymes, and then I he goes say, home. But I almost feel like I didn't see that one. But I want to say, yeah, it's when it Jamie was Lee resurrection Curtis at the top, and then she, yeah, she, he, and he kills her. her. Yeah, she kisses him and he lets yeah, go over. Yeah, which was super crazy because, again, I've never seen Resurrection. And that was the one that that same guy who does those reviews or whatever, he reviewed it. And obviously that being in the first 10 minutes of it. And a major thing, like, hey, they killed Jamie Lee Curtis in a Halloween movie. Like, it was a big deal. And I um, didn't know that until I saw that review. Me, personally, as a fan, I'm a fan. Of, I will choose Resurrection over H2O. Really? H2O has some parts that, you know, as a kid, it was back in the day. I was, like, fucking 13, 14 um, I liked it, but watching it now as a really, I haven't fan, seen it in a long time fan that I am now. I feel like there were a lot of cooler parts and a lot of, I don't know. I just can't I, I get past the like found footage and bus rhymes, martial arts fighting Michael Myers at the end. Yeah. I mean, just like I can't get used to fucking LL Cool J trying to go up against was Michael he in, Myers. Yeah. Was he, was, he, he was the fucking security guard in H2O. H2O. Yeah. I don't know, but that's just a security guard trying to fight him. Yeah. But I haven't seen Grant. I haven't seen it in a long time. Maybe it doesn't hold up to my memory. I mean, it's it's fun to watch. It's just fucking more fun to watch than Halloween Two, Rob Zombie. Yeah. Um. So we also get introduced to these other characters in the mental institution, uh, Kat and Gina, who are two just crazy fucking friends of Amy's, and basically they all hate Lori. Like Lori, she's. She's, she's yeah, okay. She's a fucking crazy. Yeah. Like nobody knows. The one, nobody wants to talk to her because she just they just think she's a psychotic yeah. bitch, which I mean she kind of is. And we're opening up, and Amy's getting out. But as she's on her way out, she sees Lori and loses her fucking mind and attacks her because why that was the, the fuck first time they had seen, they had each, seen other each other in a year, and the last time she did, she was about to get murdered by her. So yeah. it's like, um. Yeah, I think it was a good introduction to the characters. Yeah, and I like the new character of Amy. Like as as far as like this is one of the first Halloween movies where we're getting introduced to a completely brand new character who's not related to like the Strode Strode. That's right. Lori Strode, like not related to them in any way. She's not a Myers, blah, blah, blah. It's just, I mean, I guess as far as the Rob Zombie movies, because some of the other movies definitely had characters that didn't really relate. Yeah. Paul Rudd. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, which is weird because I remember kind of liking that movie when it came out. And then yeah, you go I, back I, and I watch know. it later. I, I thought so, too, because I, I, I just remember them running around the hospital. Yeah. And then finding that fucking syringe. And have you seen like, both cuts cool. of them? Like, have you seen the producer's cut or whatever? Uh, you know, after seeing that first one, I didn't want to see any of them. Have, have you seen <laughs> the comparisons of it? Like the way it ends and stuff? No. It's it so bad. Yeah. I'll point. It's worse. I'll point you to the uh, review that the guy, he talks about both versions and what's different. It's mm-hmm. so crazy. Like that's one of the things that this podcast is based on is just like, this is what that movie could have been. And that version actually was filmed and exists out there. And it's just so different. And it, like the ending, it's just like he performs a ritual and they just walk out of a hospital. And Michael Myers is just like standing there like a statue. Like it's really fucking weird. I'll yeah, see that. Both versions are a mess. So fucking weird. Yeah. That movie should have been, Never no, happened. it was it, it was happened. a huge fuck up from the very beginning. Um, 
but yeah, so we get our first reintroduction to Michael, who he kind of looms in the beginning. Like we get these two guys working at a Halloween store and he just shows up and kills them and gets a new mask. Um, which why do they always just have the same just, mask? It's just one. Yeah, and like there's only one left. <laughs> yeah. You would think if a killer, like a widely known serial killer, it was like in Scream, like you have a widely known serial killer who's known for using a particular mask, why would you sell that? For one, it just seems wildly disrespectful to everybody yeah, I, they I murdered. Say, I worked at Fantasy Costumes for a couple of years, and my best friend worked there when this clown shit was going on. Yeah. For a while, I, I feel like they uh, there were people who were who were stopping and like banning clown masks and shit. You know? Oh, like, when fantasy, the whole clown so, thing was they going on? They, I mean, they sold a shit ton during that time. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's like you think about that. It's, there's a serial killer who's out there with that mask, and you... I mean, it makes sense because maybe everybody thought he was dead and they said that mask yeah. was discontinued and it was only one left. So I mean, Yeah, I that, guess I do say that. But yeah, it's always funny how he somehow finds his way. Same with Jason. Finds yeah, his always way to finds, get the a, mask. What finds a way to get a mask. Is I, a I personally think he would have looked way cooler with the fucking half burnt mask. And the yeah, I, I really scrap. love that scene when they describe that. Um, so we get introduced to Desmond, who's one of the orderlies that the script tells us that he's fucking Lori. But as far as, like, if you were to actually... So, like, we know it because we read it. And the script literally says he's been fucking Lori. But the only kind of hints you get it in the in the actual movie is they say that she, like, rubs his hand as she walks by and stuff like that. Or, no, I guess she does have she a says, dialogue. She, she even said, I'll miss I'll fucking, miss fucking you. you. Yeah. Which none of that really makes sense. Like, we don't get any reason why they're fucking. It might be why just a Rob Zombie to. thing, dude. Like, sometimes yeah. it's just, like, he throws an extra, like, things that are just to make you feel uncomfortable. But he didn't write this. Is the no, thing. I know. But I'm saying they're trying to... Keep they're the, trying the vibe to of a Rob yeah. Zombie, you know what I mean? Like somebody who's probably, trying to be Rob Zombie when he's not Rob Zombie, right? Like um, we gotta throw in some kind of greedy piece of shit character. So let's get this. Yeah, guy gonna which he doesn't him. actually seem like that big of a piece of shit. Like, yeah, he's fucking a patient, which is not good, and he has a girlfriend. But it's like he doesn't do anything horrible. He's not like the orderlies in the first movie who are like abusive was, to Michael. You know? Like he was just the, the the scummy dude. Never really gave you a reason to hate him. Yeah, but he was just a scummy dude. Yeah. But, yeah, I just feel like generally a character like this, they like, oh, you want this guy to die. And it's like he's one of those characters who when he gets introduced, you're like, oh, he's going to die. But you never really feel like it's deserved other than yeah, just like yeah. you need a body count. You know, but then when you there's a part where he's talking to Goodman. And yeah. And Goodman tells him, he's like, do you really think that Michael's going to let you get away with, with what he's done? And what you've done to his little what sister he does to that dude. is oh, yeah. fucking Amazing. That's actually one of the better scenes of the script, actually, is so Goodman eventually goes to Desmond's house asking, just trying to get information about Lori and stuff like that. And then, like, as he's leaving, he's like, oh, by the way, How like, long have you been fucking Lori? Yeah. And the dude's like, his girlfriend's in the room or whatever. He's like, dude, come on. Shit. And they, like, go outside to talk. And then literally as Goodman is leaving, he leaves Michael. His phone. Yeah, he leaves. He forgot his phone there. And Michael kills uh Crystal is the guy Desmond's girlfriend name. Yeah, so basically, he there's all this weird shit. The back door is open, so Goodman leaves. Desmond goes back into the house, realizes Goodman left his phone. Yeah. So he grabs the phone. Then all of a sudden, he sees the back door is open. Yeah. That's, that's where he sees the figure with the with the sheet over him and the fucking glasses. Yeah. Pulls it off, realizes a dummy. Yeah. Then his girlfriend, Crystal, whatever, she yeah. came out of nowhere and fucking scares Dressed him. Dressed like a slut. Like, yeah. hey, we're going to fuck. Yeah. And then <laughs> as soon as she scares him and he's, you know, the fucking cop realizes that he forgot his phone, comes back. She tells him, hey, you know, the cop's here. I think, you know, he wants his phone. So he goes, grabs the phone. Right as he's about to leave, Michael's behind her and fucking kills her. Yeah. He goes and um then tries to fucking kill Desmond. And the way he kills him is like. So awesome. Basically, there's a hot <laughs> iron that's there, and it's just fucking steaming. And he grabs the iron and puts it, kind of just manhandles him and puts it, yeah. like he's about to burn his face off. And right when he gets, like, they, they, they explain it like it's right, like inches right, like, from, like centimeters yeah. from his fucking eyeball. And then he decides to go lower to his crotch and just and fucking just burns his fucking the crotch shit off. out of his dick with the fucking iron yeah. board. Then he, then then he, he smashes his face. face, which that's the thing. There's a lot more bludgeoning deaths for Michael in this than there are like stabbing deaths. Yeah, it's, this is like he's pissed off. Yeah, multiple times is him just beating somebody's face in until there's just nothing left. 
<laughs> which is kind of fun. I mean, I feel like this this movie should have just been made just for that one part because I would yeah. love to see how that. Would um, be, uh, like I said, there's yeah. a lot of good kills in the script. It's kind of like the story parts that get at me. There is a good. There's a line in this moment when he's talking to Goodman, where Goodman's like, "Everybody always thinks he's dead, but he always comes back," which to me doesn't really make sense in this version because Halloween one and two, do they take place like days apart or is it a year later after Halloween and the second one? But basically Um, Michael hasn't been implied dead that many times in this version. Yeah, I mean, there was a little bit of time from the time that she got taken from the hot, like that she got taken to the ambulance from, you know, the bludgeoning and all the shit at the end of part one. And then I feel like sometime there is like a, a time, time, time. Yeah. It's like a few months, like maybe even a year at most. But yeah. She's, you know, she's still around the same age, but she's a lot more. You can see she's wearing like rock t-shirts. She has like yeah. a Manson poster. She's kind of going to the dark side and shit. So it's not like, like technically this is like the 11th Halloween movie or something like that. But in reality, it would only be like the third. So there's, it, it definitely feels like a comment on the legacy of the Halloween series. Right, but, right, right. From but it doesn't make sense like as far in as the series. Being part three. Right? Yeah, like being the reboot series. Um, but yeah, lines like that, like I definitely notice things like that. Like, oh, they're trying to comment on the legacy, but yeah. eh, I don't know. Um so, yeah, I mean, there's kind of a not a whole lot. Like, I'm kind of looking at my notes trying to just piece together. Because it's been a little while since we've read this. I'm just trying to piece together the script. And not a lot happens. And a lot of it is just Michael is kind of just hanging out. And it's not until the day, like, of Halloween that like he Halloween really... Halloween fucking party that they're, that yeah. they're planning. Basically, what they find out is that how they start realizing that something's going on is there's all these killings that are happening and they're all very random and they think they have nothing to do with each other but i think it was goodman who started pinpointing yeah goodman all these, is the where one these like, murders are going and they say that the killings start forming a spiral and the spiral uh, yeah. in the end ends is right leading at the right to the mental, mental hospital style. so they know he pretty much knows or has a good idea as to where Michael Myers will be on Halloween. Night. Yeah, but everybody else is just like, "Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, He's yeah, dead. Right, right. Like, why are you still worrying about this?" There's like one cop that has his back. And do you remember the doctor's name? I I th- can't believe I didn't take K- a note on Kib- this. Kidney or Kibney or some shit. I I can't believe. So she's basically Amy's like psychiatrist, Kibner. Kibner okay, Dr. Right. Kibner. So she is, yeah, she's working with Amy. And we find out that her and Goodman are actually in a relationship. Yeah. So because th- they were both hurt, so. Kibner Wait, was, that was Josie who he was fucking. Josie. Is it Josie yeah. Kibner? Oh, no. no Kibner's Josie. like the guy leading the... Okay, Josie. So Josie was there the night of the ambulance incident. And she got cut by Michael. Was it across her back? For, across her back. And Goodman got a cut like across his chest. Mm-hmm. And they talk about... So like he goes to visit Amy or whatever and Amy gets really upset and she's like scolding him as they're like walking into an office and all of a sudden they just start undressing. Yeah. He's and like, they're talking to each other and she's unbunning her blouse. Yeah. And he's unbunning his and pants. It's like, and oh, these, fucking. yeah, these guys relate over being survivors of Michael Myers, which Turn, is, it turns into swallowing. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which is interesting. I like I like her character, first of all. Like, she's one of the characters I did latch onto in the script. Like, I like the relationship with her and Amy. I really liked Goodman as a character. Like, there were good characters mm-hmm. in the script. And those three in particular are kind of the ones I focused in on. Everybody else, like... They were just background characters. They were, they were there yeah. to kind of push the main characters. Like you yeah. said, those three were the, were the three that stuck out besides yeah. like and, Lori Michael. And, and even some of the background characters are okay. Like the crazy girls in the hospital. Like mm-hmm. they're a little much. They're, like a lot of the things they say are just for shock value. Like, yeah, like one the, of them is always wanting to fuck older orderlies or some shit yeah, like that. Some like, like vagina, like haircuts or some shit, right? Yeah, yeah. She wanted to get a, hair, uh, a heart and everyone's like, I'm going to grow it to like, fucking drags in the ground. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like weird. a lot of weird stuff like, coming from them. I was like, them. okay, somebody really wanted to be Rob Zombie. Yeah, because like they have a they have a scene where they're like in the showers and all of a sudden their clothes disappear yeah. and they think like Michael's there and then it really just turns into like that scene I didn't get. It just nothing happens. Like they go looking, they're all like wrapped in towels and walking around. I got confused there because I didn't know if they were all having like some kind of fucking... Um, like, it doesn't make sense. I don't know if... It felt like they were all having like some kind of some kind of illusion or something. It's kind like of a crazy... group hallucination. Almost. Yeah, I didn't know because I felt like 
it seemed like up to that point only Amy was having that, and then yeah. all of a sudden they like when they were all going through, I'm like, okay, Michael's about yeah. to kill them all. There actually is a good scene because Amy's having hallucinations where she's in her like room, room in the closet, and yeah, and it looks like Michael's standing in the closet, and then she turns on her lights, and it's just like some hanging clothes and like something that matches like a white mask. I'm like, that's cool. That's like a cool vision, and you can imagine seeing that in a movie and being kind of freaked out. I wish there was more stuff like that in the script. Like, as much as they try to play with the psychological aspect of the script, I just went. They went a little. I wish they went a little farther. Right. Because that's one of my favorite type of horror movies: the psychological horror. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's why I like like the Silent Hill video game so much. Because that's where they. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I really need to fucking see that movie. Talk about psychological. Yeah, and that's what I walk out of the theater still fucking figuring things out, putting things together. Yeah, and I think a lot of I don't know if a lot of people know that about that movie. I think some people might assume like, oh, it's kind of like a white slasher movie. But like, I know in the trailers, they hint at something that happened with his mom, and I assume that plays a big part into it. I really want to see that fucking movie. I'm waiting for it to show up at the Dollar Theater. Comes out, it comes out next month on DVD. May Does 26th, it? Um, sure. when, they, when they come out, there's a Dollar Theater like right by my house. That's They usually get those movies like right when they come out on Blu-ray. So, and me and my wife both want to see it in theater. So we might go see it for like a buck. So that's that'll fucking be nice. awesome, dude. Yeah, that's how we saw Taken 2, and that was a dollar wasted. Yeah, I know, <laughs> um, dude. It's fucking Liam Neeson. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so I'm trying to, yeah, because it's it's always like throughout the whole middle of the script, it's just kind of a lot of filler, pretty much. Yeah, with Lori in the hospital and Amy in the hospital and this Josie character, and just like, oh, they hate each other, but they need to get along, and like Lori like apologizes to her, which should be like a big moment, but is kind of just. It seems it, it almost seems like a half ass. It's like you don't know what to believe because of all the shit. Yeah, but then, then like she apologizes to her, but then they hug, and then she's like, "My brother's coming here, and he's gonna fucking rip oh, your dude, head off." That was my favorite fucking line. Really? It was like when she held her clothes and she whispered in her ear, "She's like, my um, Michael's here, and he's gonna cut you from your mouth to your fucking cunt." Yeah, I was like, "Damn!" That yeah, was like that was more so of fucking that. Brutal. Like that is the moment that like feels like a Rob Zombie moment. Yeah. To me. Like when that happened, I was like, God damn dude. Like that, if there was any part of this movie that I want to be made, it was like, I want to see it for, for this moment in the movie that when yeah. that happened and just like, you knew shit was going to hit the fan. I mean, cause shortly after, um, we find out that Goodman and Josie are fucking after they fuck is when you get an idea that it's happening because she looks at Goodman and, and based on the way he's talking to her, she's like, he's really here. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, and he's like, yeah, he really is. Yeah. You know? Like she was the first one besides Amy to believe that he was still alive. Yeah. And so he has a plan. So he took like some C4 from the police uh, lockup and he's like, we know where he's going to be. And, and so we know that he wants his mom's ashes. Yeah. Which, again, is a thing, like, I wish they did more with. Like, the thing with the ashes. But, like, we don't see Michael at all throughout this script. Like, it's a lot of, oh, he's in the bushes. Like, he's in the tree line. Like, imagine, like, isn't there a scene in the original where she looks out a window and he's, like, yeah. standing there or he's something? Like, and then she looks back and he's yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot I feel of... feel like, like, the cool part about that in the original is that it happened um, randomly. I feel like they kind of beat that into the ground with this one. They do. It happens like, it so often. it should have happened once or, like, twice three times at the very most yeah like, happened like five five there's like times. five or six moments even in the beginning where they're just like oh michael's in the tree line yeah he and just, like he just somebody follows him like that's how like the first half of the script is done and then he's just not there for a while then he shows up at the costume shop he kills desmond and then he doesn't show up again until the end it's like oh i think you see him once and like he's like watching the hospital from the bushes and mm -hmm. that's all he does yeah i just feel like he's like a fucking creep yeah, and he's just not much of a character. It's all about Lori, which is fine, but they don't do anything with Lori either. No. Um, so, yeah, that, I guess we we kind of just get into the third act where everyone's kind of made it to the hospital. Goodman's there. Josie's there. Uh, this Dr. Kibner guy, so while he's looking for Josie, she was supposed to do some interview or whatever, yeah. so he takes the interview because she's nowhere to be found, and he's in her office talking on a doing on the phone doing the interview and he's talking about Michael mm -hmm. and as he's talking about him he's, he's like him. yeah he comes out of the shadows behind him classic you know mm -hmm. Michael Myers moment and he's just saying all this really terrible shit about it. he's like oh he's just an idiot and blah 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 and well, he, he wore a Halloween mask long enough to where he forgot who the fuck he was yeah. pretty much and then Michael just brutally murders him yeah, so as doesn't he like sick his 
fucking head through a fish tank and like cuts his head off. With yeah, he basically glass. saws his head off with a broken glass, which is again cool. But they also say that the head is like because it's 3D because you're kind of watching them struggle through the fish tank, which mm-hmm. is a good camera shot. Right. And then yeah, his head comes into it and he saws it off, and then the head is like floating in the water. But I'm like, it can't be floating can't, in the water. The water's gonna be coming out. It's yeah, broken. Yeah, so that I mean, unless they're trying to say like as the water's coming out, his head is still. No, but it I, didn't I make feel sense. like the dude who wrote this was. I mean, if I can picture it, he's wearing a tap out shirt. Um, <laughs> I totally Duncan fucking has, get that. Like line haircut. He has a fade, um, and he's just he loves Monster Energy drinks. I, feel like I actually have a note shit. written in my notes that this guy seems like he's such a clever writer, but like only <laughs> yeah. to himself. A couple people. Like when I was reading that, I was like, this guy's a fucking bag of douche. Yeah, he was. There's a lot of moments in the writing where you're just like, oh, come on, man. I didn't look this guy up. I don't know what else he's worked on, but it might be worth looking into just to see what his volume of work like he, is. He looks like he like he sounds like he'd be uh, one of the extreme dudes from Harold and Kumar. Yeah. In the gas station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like fucking extreme cheddar. <laughs> That's like my favorite part of that movie <laughs> is when that guy yells extreme cheddar about the chips. Um, yeah. And like I write that Kibner's death is solid because it is a good death. No, for sure, and for sure. A lot of the ones in the movie are. Um so this this eventually leads to Michael going to Amy's room. And I'm confused about the motivations for Michael because the assumption is he wants to get Lori. Mm-hmm. So why is he going after Amy? Like, what's his goal with Amy is what I never they understood. Just, I mean, from, from like the characters and what they were saying, it was almost like, well, you got in the way of it in the first place. So he yeah. wants to kill you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I, I it, guess. It wasn't... It wasn't there wasn't much. It was like, oh well, he laid eyes on you, so he's gonna kill you. You know, yeah. like it wasn't. There wasn't too much depth as far as what his no. motives were for killing them. And like know? the whole thing is like, the whole of this script takes place around a mental institution. And if their goal is to look at this from a more psychological aspect, a mental institution is the perfect place, the perfect setting for that. They should have explored it more. It was my biggest issue. Yeah. Like we're there should have been more of Michael and more of Lori dealing with their mental issues. Like we get more of that in the first movie, just because we follow Michael as a child to who he becomes. I mean, it would be cool. I mean, I I thought it was going to be leading to this, but I thought it would have been a cool twist to kind of find out that the mental hospital they were at was really the one that Michael was, was at as a kid. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. That would you know, have been really great. One of them stumbled stumble upon a fucking file, and because you got to think, it's file. probably the same town, right? Right, Haddonfield. Yeah, it, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, that would actually would have been a really cool idea, and I can't believe they didn't think of that. You I know, didn't think like, of it either. Like fucking find one of his masks from the fucking room. They used to have yeah. millions of them. You know, like. Or like something. he goes into a storage room or something, and they have like a box labeled M Myers, and he pulls it open. And it's got one of his masks. In right. There. Find like find a file of him, and yeah. just put a small twist. It was something that, that would he, actually be really great. Yeah. And maybe would. this Doctor Kibner guy could have been, excuse me, leading the center when Michael was there originally. Right. And or he could have been a douchebag, and that that leads to maybe he treated Michael Michael like shit and didn't really take him seriously as a patient and just thought he was a fucking idiot, not yeah. really a killer. And that comes to why he really wants to kill him and give him such a brutal death. Yeah, something like, like that. Give a little more backstory, and it's so they, easy to tie. They that could in. have given all the orderlies backstory. Like maybe they were orderlies when he was there. You know, like there was just so much opportunity there, and a lot of this stuff I'm not even I didn't even think about till now. But that would have been a much better movie, right? I mean, it's, um, it's easy. To, I mean, like I said, when I was reading that, I I, I thought that's what direction they were going to go into, and when they did it, I was a little disappointed because I'm like, that's an easy like just a fucking intertwine like oh that was the same yeah. hospital that michael was in you know yeah, like that's a completely mental. missed opportunity um but i mean the end it, it turns into the end of any halloween movie it's a basic slash fest like he's in the hospital what i do like is these these girls that were friends with amy the kind of spears and yeah. how, how fucking brutal and just badass they were yeah I they that was pretty awesome i love that scene like for one it's three girls standing up to michael myers who throughout this series of what would have been three films i feel like is made out to be a beast that part would have really stuck out to like now you know like yeah it's a lot of like women equality and like all that shit now and like women and over like the years have become like bad at like Mila Jovovich and the Resident Evil films mm-hmm. and things like that like women You're in action next. yeah women in action films I haven't seen that but I I know I know I know enough about it yeah like women action stars have become like huge over the yeah. years and yeah that definitely because this was in the middle of that mm-hmm um, that would have worked completely. And right. it's, I could even picture somebody like Zoe Kravitz being one of these girls, like mm-hmm. just super crazy or any of the girls who were in the Mad Max movie. 
Um, That's true. Yeah. Good like point. any one of them. Yeah, because they're just like attacking and they're holding him off. They're like kicking his ass, mm-hmm. and it isn't until Lori interferes that he kind of gets the upper hand. I mean, they got they get him down at one point. They yeah. Use the, the, the the makeshift spears are pretty much like a mop handle with a, a just a, like a big kitchen knife taped to the end, which is awesome. And I like they all go through pretty brutal deaths. Like one, yeah. he grabs the broom handle and jabs it through her mouth, like yeah. out the back of her head. Which and they even describe her head landing and sliding <laughs> yeah, down. And yeah. the other one, like one of them, gets set on fire in kind of a lame way. I, I want to say there was like four girls, was it? Because then I think one gets thrown into the girl on fire and she also burns, and then the last one gets killed with a ceiling fan. Yeah, the, f- the ceiling fan sounds. Awesome. Yeah, like, but like, would a like, ceiling fan really be that powerful to slice somebody up? Um, if you get the heavy duty uh, metal, yeah, ones. if it was like a metal one, they don't like, depending on the speed. Yeah, he doesn't. They doesn't really describe. I was like, yeah, maybe if it was a metal one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he just like grabs her and lifts her up into the ceiling fan. Which just is, a visual. And I was like, wasn't she like so fucking cir- like circling around? No. Yeah, yeah. They like after like right after this scene, Amy and Goodman come into the room and like her body swinging around and the other two. <laughs> I are, feel like, like that was made for three D. Like, yeah, it was that part for sure. Yeah, I re- I really enjoy all the kind of action stuff at the end, and it's after that that the rest of the ending is just so flat for me like mm-hmm. the ending of this movie is really disappointing because it doesn't have an ending yeah like they end up leading to there's like a, a party going on in town like a yeah. festival or whatever but all the patients in the hospital get broken out and they're all kind of running crazy so the yeah. festival gets shut down and this is where like the final battle happens like there's a stage up there mm-hmm. and goodman he, he pumpkin yeah stage. he has the state yeah the stage has got a big pumpkin around it and the mouth is kind of like the stage part and he's up there and he's got the urn and he puts the C4 inside of it. And Lori hand gets handcuffed to Amy. So she's kind of like beating the shit out of her while they're trying to lure Michael to the urn to set it off. And he ends up grabbing Goodman and like slicing open his gut basically. And like what happens is I'm trying to remember the order of things. Um, yeah, Michael kills all the girls in the kitchen. But Michael then I got worries. confused because then all of a sudden the C4 was on his, was strapped to him. So basically Michael just doesn't fall for it. And what he does is he takes the C4 out of the urn and shoves it into the gash in his belly. And so Lori is... I'm just trying to remember the order of what happens with Lori and Michael. Um, so yeah, Goodman, like Lori is... Or uh, Amy is running to the stage and he's like goodman's like no get the fuck away yeah and they show that like michael basically shoved the c4 into his gut and he blows up and the stage blows up and Lori ends up cutting her own hand off to get away from the handcuffs and then she's basically just pleads to michael to kill her she's like i can't really fucking bug me because i felt like if you're really gonna put the spotlight on Lori, make her become she should have yeah she should have evolved and Michael should have been officially killed because right. yeah, at this point we find out that he takes off his mask and like we like we've been saying, his mask was melted onto his face, which is an awesome image because like right. I guess one thing that is kind of a bummer is for the first time like ever they show you Michael's face in the second Rob Zombie movie, yeah, I and mean, he they, speaks. They, they show his face in the first one. Do they actually show it? It's usually I mean uh, I know they like show him very, as a kid. No, they show his face as an adult, but it's like. I mean, he kind of just looks like Rob Zombie. <laughs> um, no, this is like the original, original, like John Carpenter. Oh, but it's like shadowed, right? Like she pulled you off his mask. See, yeah, you can kind of see him, but it was like right yeah. after she stabs him in the eye with the fucking... Yeah, you know, or, but in right. yeah, in the second Rob Zombie movie, they just straight up show him, and he mm-hmm. speaks to Loomis. We've never heard Michael speak before, aside from him, him being a kid in the Rob Zombie one. And yeah, that was kind of unheard of, and it's like, wow, really? Like We waited all this time for him to say one word, and it was just die to Loomis? Yeah. But yeah, in this one, it didn't need to be said. Like, no, he's never said die to anybody who's about to fucking kill. Why do no. you have to say it? I, I guess it's supposed to be implied that he has some hate for Loomis because of all the years they spent together. And I don't know. It, like everyone has said, that second Rob Zombie movie just wasn't that great. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I want to watch it. I need I need to form my own opinion. Yeah, on no, that movie. for sure. It's it's. I mean. It's worth watching, especially after watching this. I feel like maybe maybe a couple things uh, I will fucking click in my head from this script and the second one. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I Michael Myers, she fucking chops off her head or chops off her hand and he ends up killing her. She, she yeah, pulls she the like, knife towards her. Yeah, it's kind of like that hug moment. Like we're gonna hug and I'm gonna get yeah. stabbed. And then from there, it's she, like like Michael's, Michael kind of showing compassion in a weird way. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it went from that to. He kind of just fades into the background. You don't see him. Well, 
I'm just, I'm trying to think. Does Amy get? I think she gets kind of knocked out from the explosion, which is why I was trying to remember the order of things. If if Lori died before the explosion or after? It was after the explosion. It was. Yeah. Because in my notes, it seems like I have it after. Yeah. It was after the explosion. Then it was just Lori and Amy, and. Yeah, because basically it's like the emergency vehicles show up and Amy's like, you know, they're sitting there and like, hey, it's kind of over or whatever. And then you see Michael in the distance and like an ambulance drives by and as it goes by, he disappears. Yeah. And it's just over. I'm like, really? Like, that's it? Like, Like, how do you end a Halloween movie and you don't at least like fake a Michael Myers death? That's what that's that's what really bugged me is like it should have been like, oh, shit, he's still alive. Yeah. I mean, for him to never die or even almost die, it was like it just... There was like, at least one part in every fucking Halloween movie yeah. where he almost died, where you were like, okay. Yeah, and maybe. they either write it off in the next one, because I think it was it. It was f- four ends with him being like shot and falling down a thing, and then they drop dynamite down it. Or and even, then, even H2O. That's when he gets caught by the car. And he's stuck. Yeah, and they cut and off his head with the, head the axe. And, and then in the next one, you find out it was like the ambulance driver. Which I is remember great. watching H2O in theaters. I went with my uncles and my mom, and I was young. And I remember after that, I was kind of bummed out because I'm like, that's. That it was, was supposed all, that was to all be the Halloween the, movies. It was supposed it. to be the last one, but I guess it was so successful. They're like, well, let's find a way to bring him back. Yeah. And then they found out it was actually a cop and he fucked yeah. up his uh, vocal cords so he couldn't even scream. Yeah. You know? and, Which I do love the ending of H2O, like where she had like knowing that there's more coming after her. Even, you know, if that would have been the end of it. I love that ending where she fucking just mm-hmm. cuts his head off with the axe. I thought that was great. But it was just I felt like that's what it was like. And like a big part was just missing. And it was the actual part where you felt like Michael Myers was yeah there was nothing that felt threatening to him and that's what bugged me is that he spends so much of the script as like a background character yeah and it's and Lori doesn't do Lori kind of takes the center stage as the villain but she doesn't do anything no in the end she fucking asks to die it's like yeah it's like you build up this character to seem to be the second coming of Michael Myers and then she asks to be killed yeah it's like so then why'd you even spend that time building her up yeah you should spend more time giving a little more backstory as to Michael Myers yeah you know? like I, I definitely think there's some stuff in the script that does work and I think if you you expanded on those things more, you could have made a great movie that could have led to a great franchise. Right. Like we said, make Lori the killer. Like Mm -hmm. if you're going to get rid of Michael, make her the new Michael. Like let's have have a female killer for a while. Give the fans what they want. People wanted to see that and see Lori turn. And I mean, it would be interesting just to fucking see it. You know I mean? Yeah. See, even you telling me that there has always been fan theories for years. I've never heard any of that. So knowing that that's something fans would have been into, like I was into it just from reading the script and the idea of it. So knowing that that's something that's been out there before, like just do it. Oh man, do I, I, why am I forgetting his name from Eastbound and Down? Uh, Danny McBride. Yeah. Danny McBride. He's doing the, the new Halloween. Yeah. They're doing a new one. And the cool part is that this is taking place right after the, after part, two, the original part two, which I just, I just read that somewhere. I didn't know yeah. that. And I am so fucking excited because I mean, some people were like, well, he's doing McBride. It might be a comedy. It's like, no dude, no, you'd be man. surprised how many people who are in the fucking comedy genre of movies and, and have that kind of personality who are real horror fans. Yeah. And, and a lot of people say like, Everybody always says, ooh, comedians can't do drama. But some of the best comedians Dude, have done drama better out. than anybody. Again, Get Out yeah. was done by, by fucking Jordan Peele. Robin Williams won an Oscar for Goodwill Hunting. And he's a comedian, but that was one of the best dramatic performances that I've ever seen. The thing is, comedy is a lot harder than drama. It's a lot harder to make someone laugh than to make someone feel something. Right. And, you know, horror and drama are not that far apart. Right. And, you know, a lot of horror movies feature comedy, too. So mm-hmm. putting someone of that caliber, and we all know he's a great writer. He's worked on mm-hmm. series like Eastbound and Down and uh, was that Principles, Vice Principles. Um, either way, uh, he's done a lot. And he's in the new Alien movie. And he, yeah, even he I, I himself like shit, has said that, like, there's no jokes in that movie. Like, it is a straight up horror film. So, like, and I mean, if you read, I mean, if anybody's interested in what's coming from Danny McBride, I highly recommend reading some articles because even from the small little interviews that he's done. Yeah. He sounds so serious about it. And it's, yeah, absolutely. it's so refreshing as a fucking yeah. horror fan to hear somebody want to give it justice. And he, he's giving it kind of like the feel that John Carpenter did. He said he wants to yeah. do the same thing, kind of hold, pull a little back and make it less is more almost like Beetlejuice where he is the main character, but you don't see him as much. Yeah. But when you, you know, it's like, 
Yeah, and that's the way to do it. Like, it is definitely hard, like, to think about a new Halloween movie nowadays because it's like, what do you do with a franchise that's been around for over 20 years mm-hmm. and, like, almost everything's been done before? And honestly, you watch a lot of those Halloween movies and a lot of the sequels are not that good. Like, <laughs> like anything yeah. past three is kind of like, you know, you like it because you're a fan, but they're not good movies. It's, it's like a bad movie you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, Fucking um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, dude. I just watched it. Like yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a fucking bad movie that people love. And it, it's really hard to think of like how to breathe life into a franchise that old, but he's a guy I feel like who could do it. Yeah. And I, I mean, didn't know it was going to be a off sequel. the fucking perfect place, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, if there's anything that's really going to catch people's attention, like part two was, I would say, the last. I mean, Halloween the first movie. two are the best Halloween movies. Right. Like, if down. you go back, I mean. They hold up today. Yeah, you, 100%. you go back and you ask any true Halloween fan, like, what are your favorites? I mean, a lot of them do say one and two. So yeah. what perfect place to start off? Then, I'm right? not a big fan of slasher movies. Like, I can count on, like, three fingers how many slasher movies I like. And it's, like, Halloween 1, Halloween 2, and Scream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, those movies are great. They hold up. We watched them last October. Like, they were on TV. They were running a marathon of all those movies. So I, I think we saw, like, the first... They skipped three because they were only doing the Michael Myers ones. So I think we saw like one, two, four, and five. And I don't think we watched any of the other ones. But one and two were still great like today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I knowing that it's continuing after two, I didn't know that until recently. I thought it was just going to be a reboot. I'm really excited for it. I yeah, dude. I can't wait for that shit. Yeah. And we honestly, we still have another Halloween script to cover, which I think we might wait till around Halloween yeah, to do that do one. It. Yeah. Um, because awesome. yeah, no, I didn't want to like save both of them and like have to wait two years to cover both of these. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah, we have because this was based after Rob Zombie's second movie. This was the next script, mm-hmm. and then there's Halloween Returns, which was l- two years ago when it was written. I think it's dated 2015. So was well, was this gonna be a whole new one or what was it was it? gonna be a reboot? I think um, I I'm okay. not entirely sure. I don't know much about it. There's less information out there for that one than there was for this one. But, uh, yeah, it was basically their most recent attempt. I don't know if it was because I think it was there because they're doing a new Friday the 13th and a new um, Halloween around the same time. And I have the scripts for both. And I think one of them was going to be found footage, but I think it was going to be Friday the 13th. OK, um, that makes sense. So which honestly, if that could be interesting, mm-hmm. I know found footage is way overplayed, yeah. but sometimes it can still be good. And Friday the 13th might be an interesting I heard they're one. making a new um, Friday the 13th, but they're focusing on like a Jason Voorhees backstory. Or, really? I could have been right. There's Friday the 13th that... has never been one that I was like super a big fan of. Really? Um, for me, like. I don't like it when it goes supernatural. Like mm-hmm. my slasher movies and stuff, I like it a little more. Like my like Halloween for the most part. There's nothing supernatural about those first two movies, mm-hmm. aside from the fact that he gets shot in both of his eyes and blown up. In the yeah, and he falls off top yeah. of the house and gets up like ten minutes later. Yeah, but like other than that, it's like it's it's semi believable, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Scream is, I like it because it's just guys and it's like poking fun the, at the horror genre. The best genre. part of Scream is. The fact that they pulled the sheet over your eyes and you yeah. thought that there was one killer when there was really two. And that was the first movie that, that really fucking did yeah. that shit. And Scream was, uh, was pretty smart with that so show. amazing, when it, even today. And I actually really like Scream 2 as well. Um, I don't remember the third one very much. I only saw it once when it came out. Yeah, the third one was, um, it wasn't bad. The no, fourth one was actually, fourth know, one was actually honestly, really great. They weren't bad. I I watched them all, and I I would I would own them all. I saw the fourth I one for the first it. time like last year, and I thought it was really great. I thought it was fun, mm-hmm. and I really liked the uh, Emma Roberts like beating mm-hmm. the fuck out of herself at the end. I thought that I thought Scream Four was really fun. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean Halloween again. But with that, everybody's been waiting for Neff Campbell to be the yeah. Kid. It's almost like Laurie, you know, like you get tormented a lo- long enough, you're gonna fucking turn. Yeah, and people for forever have been talking about maybe it's gonna be this fucking scream that that Neff Campbell turns. I wonder if they'll ever make another one. I heard that they were. Wes but... Craven, he he died, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I him and uh, Carpenter, I get mixed up all the time. No, Carpenter's still alive and kicking. He's actually gonna be helping Danny McBride. Yeah, he's he's heavily That's involved with it. Fucking awesome. So yeah, I think that movie's gonna be great. Um, this one, yeah. It had stuff that they really could have expanded out, and this could have been a great movie. Yeah, but as it is on paper, it's really sad. No, I like I said, the dude wearing a tap out shirt <laughs> tried to put a movie together, and he sounded so bro like. And yeah, it's it's pretty rough. Had good ideas, but overall, the reason why it was never made. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So, do you have anything else to say about the script? 
No, I mean if you're if you're a Halloween fan, I'd recommend just reading it just for fucking fun. You know? Yeah, it's, I mean it's it's, it's, it's part of the read. history, right? Um, right. And it's just cool to hear to see somebody's take on what they would do. You know? It's, yeah. It's still entertaining to say the least. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend reading up on the Danny McBride thing if you guys haven't heard about that because that's is that does that have a shit. release date like a year? Um, like, is I don't it know, next but year? you know what? There's another side note. But did you know that uh, Glass is going to be coming out? Yeah, and, uh, which. I'm I'm I haven't really talked about this on the podcast. We talk about it a lot in the back. I am not an M Night Shyamalan fan. No, I think. Did you like Unbreakable? Did you ever see no. it? No, no. Um, I we have you seen Split? Not Split yet. Split was fucking. I great. do want to see Split. Split. I have not was seen so good. So the one movie I'll give him is The Sixth Sense. I didn't really like it when it came out, but for what that movie did and what it was, I'll give that one to you him. You know, I'm not even gonna lie. I liked Signs. I fucking hated Signs really? so much. Like a friend of mine brought it over. He's like, "Dude, this movie's so great. You got it. It's so scary." And like we're watching it, and I'm just so bored. And then I thought it was so dumb when it was over. Like the common complaints about that movie, like the swing away and why you're gonna invade a planet where seventy percent of it would kill you, mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff really stuck out to me. And it's just like I was so bored through most of it. Like it has a couple good moments, like uh, when they're in the basement mm-hmm. and like the arm reaching through. Like that was a decent moment, and some stuff in the cornfield. I just don't think he's that good of a filmmaker. Like you know, I. I will say Split right, made me reconsider what I fully thought of him. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm going to give him a chance because I have to because I I'm fucking sp- love Tales from the Crypt and he's the one doing it. Uh, so it's yeah, like, I'm really worried to, about that. Um, uh, Tales yeah. from the Crypt is one of my favorite things in the world and if he fucks that up... Um, they put out a trailer the that trailer looked thing okay. Looks fucking cool, man. There's a lot of really cool visuals. And I mean, yeah, I, I am I a little say, confused because the, the trailer showed the Crypt Keeper and everything has said that it's not going to have the Crypt Keeper. So I don't know if that was just to pull the people in. Um, yeah, the laugh and or shit. yeah, or if they are going to change their mind and put in the Crypt Keeper. No, I think he's gonna do it, but it's a in his certain way. Um, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, definitely check that out. Um. Yeah, whatever yeah. you want to plug. In. Um, well, do you want to plug Cryptic Closet? I know we always do. Oh yeah, here, as but. always. Um, I got a horror apparel brand called the Cryptic Closet. Um, we recently just did C2E2 this past weekend, which seemed great for you guys. Yeah. I stopped by your booth, and every time I came by, you had so many people there. You were in a really good area, like yeah. a lot of traffic coming through there. And you know, we sold a lot of like the fucking reanimator shirts and then tra- alkaline Trejo and shit. Um, <laughs> I love that. But we're actually doing the next show after this. Will be. Days of the Dead in Indianapolis. And that's June? That's June 29th, I want to say. Yeah. I know that, it's around my birthday. last weekend going so. into July, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And yeah, because it, it goes into like July 1st or, or 2nd, something. Right. right. Yeah. And I mean, there's going to be um, Sid Haig, Bill Mosley, fucking yeah, you had the, George uh, Romero. You Sting. had the card there for the thing, the event, and it looked great. Like They had a lot of really good guests yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the next thing we're trying to do... Um, if all goes well, I want to get on New York Comic Con. Really? Yeah. That would be awesome. Because yeah. it's the same people who do C2E2 and they got a whole Yeah, list. I was actually, so when we were at C2E2, I was waiting in line. I ended up making friends with a guy who was like working the line or whatever. And we were talking about that. And he's been doing C2E2 for like three years. And he was telling me how it's the same people that do New York. And some mm-hmm. of them go and do that. So that was, that was really cool. Yeah, I know that one's in like October. That would be awesome. Um, I've always wanted to go to New York and LA Comic Con, although I know they're insane. But... Uh, yeah, you know what? And what I'll do is um, if anybody ends up coming to any of these conventions and you've heard the Shelf Podcast and know of the Cryptic Closet or Jeremy, feel free to come on by, say what's up, and I'll throw you a free print. Free pin. I need to talk. <laughs> print. Which I love your pins. You gave me the Eric Draven one, which is yeah, fucking cool. awesome. And that get out pin you have is really good. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys know and you want to say what's up, say, you know, I've heard your podcast, you know, the fucking shell podcast is awesome. I was listening to the Halloween or whatever, you know, whatever you want to yeah. say, even if it's just a simple hi, um, you'll walk away with the free pin. So yeah. And if you like this podcast, you know, being a horror fan, you've also done Resident Evil mm-hmm. and you did what else did you do? Um, the Resident Evil, we did the Hollow um the Crow twenty thirty seven. Yeah, by with another which was another Rob Zombie script. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, I think it? uh we're gonna be doing what? We did Wonka and yeah, Wonka that was, was it. A lot this will be the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah, and we definitely like you're my go to for horror scripts. So we're yep. definitely, I have a lot of horror. Scripts. I just added like two years worth of scripts onto my spreadsheet. So I definitely have some more stuff for you. Good shit. Well, um, but yeah, man, for thanks me, for dude. sitting me. And uh, I mean, you can find Cryptic Closets also on uh, Instagram, right? Yep. As Instagram, crypt- it's at the Cryptic Closet. Yeah. Um, we have a Facebook. It's not as updated frequently. Yeah. It's, it's like here and there. I have a couple shit. I'm trying to keep up with it a little more. 
Um, and we do have a Twitter that I've been getting a little better at updating, yeah. and that's just at Cryptic Closet. There's no duh. Yeah, which we just got an Instagram for the show, so you can now find Shelf Podcast on oh, Instagram. Oh, well, good shit. Well, yeah. I'll be following you guys. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, we're on Twitter at Shelf Podcast. The Twitter and Instagram are the same. And again, you can email the show at shellfilmpodcast at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, tell us how much you love the cryptic closet stuff because, it's again, it's really great. Or if there's a fucking awesome horror script that yes. you think Jeremy might not have heard of yet and you think it's something you'd want to hear us talk about, definitely send it Yeah, I do have some people that have been sending me scripts, and thank you to all those people. That's awesome. Yeah, it's I, I love interacting with everybody on Twitter and Instagram and all that, so be sure to check us out. Vinny, thanks for sitting with me talking Halloween. Thank you. Sorry we didn't get to do it last week, but oh, I'm no, it's fine. to do it this week. Yeah, no, I had a lot of fun talking about this one. It was an interesting script, and I knew I was going to have fun. Fuck so. yeah. All right, all right man. man. Thanks a lot. Mm-hmm.